Hello crafters, this is Yana Smukula for SimonSestium.com. Welcome back for another Yippee for Yana episode. In this video, I'm stamping simple birthday cards using the Balloon Greetings stamp set. All supplies I'm using for this project are listed and linked in the video description below for your convenience. This stamp set features two solid balloon images, a smaller one and a larger one, along with several sentiment options that layer over the balloons. It's a great stamp set for fun birthday cards. The idea for my projects today is to stamp a balloon cluster or a balloon background using various colors of ink. I have my mini Misty stamping tool and white cardstock panel inside uh, already placed inside my Misty. I found I needed to double stamp each balloon, so using the Misty worked really well. I started with a color Melon. This is a beautiful pale yellow, you know, more of a cream color, and I stamped it onto my cardstock. Next, I cleaned the stamp using the stamp chamois and repositioned the balloon on my panel to stamp it. I wanted to overlap the images as much as possible to create the illusion of some balloons being placed in the foreground and some balloons in the background. And the next color I used was Cheeky, which is a really pretty pale pink. At this moment, the ink and the stamping looks very splotchy. You know, it is uneven and it doesn't look good. But as with any stamping, you always need to give your ink time to dry. So if you stamp something and you don't like the way it looks, set it aside, give it time, give it a couple of minutes for the ink to absorb into the paper, spread into the paper, and dry. The image will look much better in a few minutes, I promise you. Next, I again repositioned the balloon and stamped it onto the panel using the next ink color, which was cantaloupe. It is a very pretty yellow-orange color, you know, not too vibrant, not too orange, but just perfect for this feminine card. Now, the inks I'm using today are all from Simon Says Stamp. They are the positively saturated inks. They're very easy to clean off a stamp, and it is very easy to go from one ink color to another, as these inks do not stain stamps. And this is the main reason why I picked this particular ink formula to create these cards. I knew I would be using a lot of different uh, colors of ink. I knew I'd be going back and forth between colors, and I needed to use the kind of ink that was very easy to clean. So these inks are perfect for this type of stamping. I picked four colors of ink for each background. I stamped three balloons in the bottom row, and next two balloons in the row above it, and two more balloons at the very top row. So seven balloons in total. The fourth color of ink that I used for this background was blush, and this is the darkest and the most vibrant color. And I plan to have the balloon stamped in that color, mostly centered on my panel, as that balloon color was the darkest. I needed to have that balloon in the center to have the most pleasing balloon placement, I would say. I continued to stamp the balloons to create my cluster. With this smaller balloon size, I didn't fill the entire background, but I rather made a groupings of the balloons. I also used the bigger balloon image and I stamped it in a similar way, filling the background in. Now, since that balloon was much bigger in size, it worked well to fill the entire card background. So you have options, whether you want to create a balloon cluster or stamp several of the larger balloons to fill the entire background. So here I went with the peach and pink colors for a very feminine card, but you can also change the colors of your card and adapt the design to make a masculine card. You know, just pick blues and greens for your balloons and you'll have yourself an easy masculine birthday card. Here I stamped one background using the celery, seafoam, marine, and surf ink colors. And I also made another panel by adding a bit of purple and the colors I used were lilac, melon, cheeky, and cantaloupe. Now the next step in this process is to add a sentiment to our backgrounds. I wanted to do heat embossing, to do gold for the feminine card and then silver for the masculine card. And in order to do heat embossing on any sort of stamped background, you need to make sure the background is bone dry. So I used my heat tool to dry the backgrounds. Now you can set your panels aside and let them air dry, but honestly, this is going to take a lot longer so using a heat tool is a good option if you want to continue creating without making a pause. 
Next, I trimmed my panels to either three and three quarter inches by five inches or three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. Now I wanted the balloons to go outside the edge of my panels. So the size of the panels dependent, depended on the balloon placement. If the balloons were spread out, I only cut the panel to three and three quarter by five inches. But if the balloons were clustered tightly in the center, I had to trim the panel down a little bit more. Next, I tested the panel to make sure the ink was dry. I poured embossing powder to see if the powder would stick to the panel, and it did, so I'm glad I tested it before doing my actual stamping. I dried it some more using my heat tool. It is always best to do this test as the last thing you want is to mess up your background after all of that work that you put in while you were creating it. Next, I went back to my Mini Misty stamping tool and I used it to stamp the sentiment. Now, since these smaller balloons are, well, obviously smaller, the sentiment doesn't fit inside any particular balloon. So I just have the sentiment in the center of the panel spawning across the balloons. I treated my panel with an anti-static powder tool. I inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink and I stamped it onto my panel. Next, I added the Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder and I heat set it using my heat tool to melt it. I then stamped the balloon strings in the same way. There is just one balloon string image in this set, but you can rotate it to have two different string designs on your card. And that's what I did. So my strings look a little bit different. Next, I wanted to heat emboss a sub sentiment and I wanted to emboss it on colored cardstock to match uh, to the stamped balloons. I wanted the color of that colored cardstock to be the same as one of the stamped balloons. So I made my own cardstock. I did that by swiping the ink pad that I used for stamping. So I swiped the ink pad on the white cardstock panel. I basically went direct to paper and I either pressed or tapped or swiped the ink pad across the panel until I had a, a nice solid ink coverage. So this gave me a piece of paper that matched the balloon stamping perfectly. I used my heat tool to dry that panel. I tested it for dryness. And once again, once it was perfectly dry, I heat embossed a sub sentiment in gold embossing powder. Next, I used a banner die from my stash and I cut it out in my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine. Now, this is the only die cutting that I did for these cars. Everything else is stamped. There's no more die cutting involved. By the way, the balloon stamp set has coordinating dies. If you want to create, you know, die cut balloons or something like that, you can pick the coordinating dies up in the Simon Says Stamp store. There's even a die to cut the balloon string. Next, I cut a piece of white fun foam and I cut it just slightly smaller than I, my stamped panel. I added double-sided tape to the foam and adhered it from the back of my stamped panel. This helped flatten the panel as it warped slightly from all of the heat that I applied to it. And it also added dimension to my card. I love to add dimension and I always try to pop at least one of the elements on my projects. I also used a foam strip to pop the heat embossed sentiment strip. And again, this added a little bit more dimension to my card. Next, I embellished the card with several colorful sequins. I picked sequins in pink and gold to match to the color of the stamped balloons. I scattered the sequins around the sentiment and this added some playful movement to the card. And finally, I used a gold pen from my stash and I added some gold dots to the base of each balloon. And this created the illusion of confetti inside the balloons and it just helped pull the card together. You know, the gold dots or the gold confetti worked really well with the gold heat embossing. And I love the way it turned out. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.